Today is Friday, the first week of Advent. During this Holy Eucharist, we pray for the intentions of all our parishioners from Cristo Rey Parish and from Santissimo Salvador de Mundo. We pray for an end to this pandemic, pray for those who have died, those who are sick, and we pray especially for all our frontliners and their loved ones for their safety and protection. Behold, the Lord will come, descending with splendor to visit his people with peace, and he will bestow on them eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, we pray, O Lord, and come, that with you to protect us we may find rescue from the pressing dangers of our sins, and with you to set us free we may be found worthy of salvation, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God says this, Shall not Lebanon in a very little while become a fruitful field? and the fruitful field be regarded as a forest? On that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the neediest people shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant shall be no more, and the scoffer shall cease to be. All those alert to do evil shall be cut off. Those who cause a person to lose a lawsuit, who set a trap for the arbiter in the gate, and without grounds deny justice to the one in the right. Therefore, thus says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. No longer shall Jacob be ashamed. No longer shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. And those who err in spirit will come to understanding. And those who grumble will accept instruction. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to God's word, we say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Response, The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. Response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait. For the Lord. Response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went on from his own village, two men who were blind followed him crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the men who were blind came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout the district. And dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, uh, during the first Sunday of Advent, when I celebrated the Mass, I said, this Advent season is a time for us to prepare as we wait for the coming of the light of the world. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. And as I have said, during this time of pandemic, our prayer is, may the darkness of this pandemic and all our anxieties, fear, questions, uncertainties, may they all vanish before the light of the Word. The readings today speak of seeing, visual, speak of light. From the first reading from the prophet Isaiah to the responsorial psalm to the gospel, they speak of light. They speak of Christ as the light of the world. On, the day the deaf on that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll, and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. The response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then the gospel about these two men who were blind. But remember what Jesus said. Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. And Jesus said, touching their eyes. And Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were open and they were able to see Jesus. We speak of blindness. When we are blind, we don't see light. When we are blind, we see darkness. And nobody wants to live in darkness. And people are afraid of darkness, especially children. They don't want to be in the place of darkness. And when there is darkness, they hold on to the hands of their parents to assure, to comfort them, and to remind them that they are not alone, that they should not be afraid. And that is why Advent is an appropriate time for us to leave the darkness of our sin behind and embrace the light. Is this still possible? Is there hope for us? Yes. And we need to believe that nothing is impossible with God. Let us have faith that in during this darkest time of our lives, God is with us and God will never abandon us. Let us have that faith in God. As Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. According to your faith. My dear brothers and sisters, what is holding us? What is stopping us from welcoming the light of the world? Why do we prefer to live in darkness when the light is waiting for us? Waiting for us to be invited into our lives. And that's why the beautiful prayer and hymn during this Advent, Come, Lord Jesus, come into my life, the light of the world, that I may not walk in darkness. We are not only speaking of, of physical blindness. We also speak of spiritual blindness. We also speak of blindness that doesn't allow us to see our brothers and sisters for who they are. We don't see sometimes the people around us. Or we choose to see those whom we want to see. That's also blindness. Because God is present in each one of us. And that is why 
in whatever situation we find ourselves in, whatever blindness we experience in life. Let our prayer be, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, the light of the world. Come, my light and my salvation. Believe and have faith. Because according to our faith, it will be done to us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with His glorified body. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Today, the church will be open for private prayer and confession at 2 to 3 in the afternoon and 5 to 6 in the evening. And tomorrow, Saturday, the church will be open from 5 in the afternoon to 7 in the evening for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And again, on Sunday, we will continue to live stream the Holy Eucharist at 9 o'clock Mass in Portuguese and at 11 o'clock Mass in English. And in the afternoon, the church will be open for private prayer from 1 to 2 and 5 to 6. Have a blessed Friday and stay safe.